Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. I want to talk about Makai Wingo and Mason Smith running the 40 yesterday, but first, I uh, saw a retweet of yours uh, from Jaden Daniels up at the Combine saying that uh, he's not going to do any of the workouts at the Combine for his teammates because he wants a big crowd at Pro Day so that everyone comes to see him and by proxy sees the rest of the guys on the roster. Are you buying that? Um, whether I buy it or not, it's a really good answer. It is. Um, I think if we're being honest, I think we all know it's more about being in an environment you're comfortable with, throwing the guys you're comfortable with and <clears throat> really doing it like that. Um, I I'll say this, whenever I've talked to media outside of LSU guys, from day one, I've always told him, I mean, look, this kid's a likable guy. I, I remember after the Florida State game, the first time I ever got to talk and interview him, very likable guy, very accountable guy. Um, and I think that the, the, that's the kind of answers he's done just kind of subtly uh, during his time at LSU where you kind of understand the kind of humility and, and, and just good charisma he brings to the table. I do think he's going to do very well in these interviews and with teams. And I could see why a team would want to use a top five pick on him. Is there any chance he goes first? Yeah, I, I think there's a chance, not like a big one. I think Caleb Williams kind of has that uh, as locked down as you, you can. But, man, there's some red flags popping up with, with Caleb Williams that aren't there with Jaden Daniels. Um, you know, <sighs> Things like, you know, we have all know about the character issues and stuff. He's not using his own uh, agent. You know, he puts F.U. on his nails. And then, you know, he doesn't want to – well, I'd say the biggest red flag I've seen so far is the um, uh, the sheer fact that he won't do the medical exam yeah. at the combine. I mean, because if we're being honest, that's the biggest – you know, thing of all, if you fail a drug screening or, you know, you, some health issue pops up, I mean, that, uh, that, that's the biggest thing that will drop, drop, your, you know, drop your stock. And that tends to be the absolute minimum guys participate in if they show up to the combine. So I'd call that a red flag for sure. Now he said he's going to meet with teams and, and do the medical with them. He's like, you know, not all 32 teams can draft me. So why do all 32 need medical? Well, that to me leads me to believe, okay, so what are you hiding? <laughs> is there something like some sort of issue that you need to, you know, delay this, this medical exam for, uh, or, or what just speculation is all I got, but it is a red flag and it is one that might open that window for Jaden to come in and impress people, but, but we'll see. Feels like two or three for Jaden, but I'm not ruling out number one either. We'll see how that goes over the next couple of months. Makai, Wingo, and Mason Smith, a couple of guys LSU would have loved to have back on the defensive front next year, but they don't. Now those guys are moving on professionally. They ran the 40 and are working out at the Combine this week. Do you see their results? And what do you think about the draft prospects for both guys? Uh, well, I saw Jordan Jefferson and um, Makai Wingo in particular is having a very, very impressive um, – uh, performance so far a four eight six forty and I think he had a one six four ten yard split which for defensive tackles is is even more impressive uh I, I think the way these guys are measuring uh it, it kind of raises some questions about what the heck was Matt House doing you know because you weren't getting super high level of production out of uh, either of those two guys and you know it makes you question why why weren't you you know, because the measurables are all there. I, I think as time is moving on, I think we're more and more evidence suggests that there was some serious coaching issues for LSU's defense this last year. And there were, in fact, guys with talent on that defense. What do you think of Mason Smith's prospects as far as where he could go in the draft and what his NFL career could look like? Yeah, I mean, he's got all the measurables. I mean, talking about a big guy, big, strong player, um, just – none of the production. Uh, I think that he's a guy who needs to be coached up very well. Uh, I think he's a guy who uh, 
needs to learn to play with leverage and go out there and produce. I do think he's a guy, you know, day two or three, if he's there, I could see why a team would like him and want to bring him in and give him a chance because, you know, if you can get him playing more disciplined and and, and really kind of, and not to mention, I think he needs a little bit of a conditioning program. I think he needs to trim up a little bit. You know, he never really got a full off season of conditioning simply because he dealt with so many injuries during his time at LSU. So uh, I, I do see the potential there. I just, I mean, I, I don't see him going in the first three rounds. What about Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors as you started to look at some mock drafts and, and kind of um, see what their immediate future holds? I mean, I'd say their immediate future holds uh, a handsome paycheck yep. and a first-round draft pick for both. Uh, I saw a little bit of buzz about Brian Thomas possibly sliding down to the Saints, which would excite me um, the, uh, simply because, we don't know what you're getting out of Michael Thomas there. And, uh, man, he, he, this is a deep, deep, deep receiving class. I mean, we're talking about guys. I could see four or five of these guys being your number one receiver in many years. Think about guys like Roma Dunsey and uh, Malik, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, really, I, I could see Brian Thomas being a number one receiver in most years. But this in this season, we're going to see him probably slide back to the middle of the first round. Uh, and then I think I do believe that um, uh, Malik Neighbors, if he's not your first receiver off the board, he's your second. So uh, he'll be going to uh, a team up there. I've seen New York a yeah, bunch. A lot. And, yeah, uh, you know, it, it, and that's assuming New York doesn't go for a quarterback. I also saw <laughs> before before Jaden split up to a unanimous top three pick, a lot of teams were saying, well, maybe New York goes with Jaden Daniels. So. We'll see what direction they go with Daniel Jones, but I'm going to tell you what, I definitely think he's he's a very safe pick, is what I would say about Malik Neighbors. I just don't see any ways. There's no character issues. There's no athleticism issues. It's, you know, I, I don't think he's the kind of guy where you know a tweaked ankle and he loses a half set and he's no good either. Uh, that There are a lot of receivers who rely on their pure athleticism. I, I think Malik Neighbors is about as safe a pick. So I, I think... Uh, it's going to be a good draft day for LSU. Uh, and all, all those offensive players they're recruiting in 2025 are going to be uh, should be pretty excited looking at what LSU is putting out there. When you look over this modern run at LSU, and you look back at like Clayton and Henderson in in '03, yeah. and you look back at maybe Bo and Doucette and Beckham and Landry and Chase and Jefferson, like it, th- those duos, do do Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas still belong in that conversation? Oh, for for sure, for sure. I I, I would put them. Maybe even above Odell and Jarvis. I mean, that sounds crazy. I mean, if you went back 10 years ago, if I could tell you that LSU would have not one, but two duos of receivers better than that, I I would call you crazy. But, I mean, I think we all acknowledge that Chase and and Jefferson are are, are better. Um, But, yeah, I mean, they absolutely belong in the conversation, whether or not they're better or not. I'm going to tell you what, they're going to get drafted higher. I think Odell Beckham was number 13. And I, I Jarvis Landry was like the forty third pick of the draft. He was yeah, a second rounder. Second rounder, yep. There's no way either of those guys fall to in the forties. They'll they'll be off the board by twenty five, uh, at the latest I see. So um yeah, on paper, they're right up there with them. You know what's a cool thing to think about though, is that you look back at those guys and, and it's Devery and and Clayton, Louisiana guys, Odell and Jarvis, yeah. Louisiana guys, Jets and Chase, Louisiana guys, Thomas and Neighbors, Louisiana guys. Like that's none of them are from out. You had to go back to Dwayne Bow in that in that discussion to get somebody out of Louisiana. Yeah, it's it's pretty nuts, but that's kind of what makes LSU a special job, and, and not just receiver DBs. The speed guys grow on trees around these parts. I mean, you just do not have to invest very much or work very hard to find a kid who is good enough to be a first round draft pick in either of those, you know, those speed positions. That's, that's what makes this job so special. The LSU, the history of LSU is not one of administrative competence. That's just the, the hard fact of the matter. It is a program that, you know, once you've got guys, you know, at least Bernardo tried to build the fence back up around and then Saban really did fortify that fence. Once you start the culture of these guys coming to LSU, uh, it's hard to undo that, you know, and 
And that is really what props this job up as special as it is. I think it's one of three jobs with elite recruiting geography. You know, Ohio State has a talent rich Ohio to recruit, and uh, Georgia has, you know, the state of Georgia to recruit, and no one to really split it with. I mean, yeah, there's Florida, but I mean, how many teams have to split that talent in Florida? And yeah, there's Texas. How many teams does Texas have to split that with? Uh, uh, Teams like LSU, Ohio State, Georgia. They get these kind of athletes all over, and they don't have anybody to share it with. That's why those are special jobs. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your Fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.